In this video, we're going to do a quick real flow introduction. We're going to build one gas run in real flow using the IO simulation board that we have. So in tell pace, we could go ahead and hit offline. One thing you'll notice is your communication LEDs are all up here for all the communication that we have. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the USB and serial connection um, and just use the Ethernet connection going forward. Make sure I go ahead and change this to Modbus TCP. Make sure I could still go online with it so I could still connect to it. I'll hit offline. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up RealFlow. RealFlow will look like something like this when you open it up. Um, uh, they made this screen for uh, users who just go in and calibrate inputs or change orifice place. It's just an easy, quick access menu. But for this lab, we're going to go ahead and switch to expert mode. Once we switch to expert mode, RealFlow will look like this. We're going to go ahead and create a new program. When you create a new program, it's going to have a couple different options. We're going to create the configuration step by step. First, it's going to ask you, do you have a flow computer connected to this PC? And we know that we have that SCADA pack 3, 350 connected, so we'll go yes. It says, how do you want to communicate to the flow computer? You could use the current settings, but I'm going to go ahead and choose and view the communication settings because I don't know what they're set up as right now. In here, I don't want to use Modbus RTU. I want to use Modbus TCP because that's how I'm connected to it. Uh, try not to use Modbus RTU or over serial. It just takes a lot more time. For these labs, it's probably a lot easier using Ethernet. So that's what I'm going to use. In here, I know my IP address is 192.168.0.159. Oops, 159. OK. It connects to the SCADA pack and realizes there's no C program in that SCADA pack. So it's asked you. Um, do you want to write the C program? So you could either write the uh, flow computer with Enron Modbus, so that means they'll write the latest and greatest version of RealFlow, or you could pick an older version or a custom version that you've created. So I'm going to write the latest and greatest and go next. And it'll ask you, do you want to write um, flow computer version 7? And I'll go yes. And now this will take a little bit, so I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward the video a little bit here. Once the C program is finished writing to the SCADA pack, you'll get this screen. Um, what you want to do in this screen is we're going to set it, uh, the flow computer to our computer's time. Uh, typically what happens with the time in a SCADA pack, they will all be time synced maybe in the middle of the night by the SCADA server. So initially you could just set it as your computer time and then there'll be um, other there'll be the SCADA server that will be time syncing every SCADA pack so all the SCADA packs use the same time. This is uh, critical in EFM data because all your data is timestamped so this is really important. So go next and next again it's going to ask you um, what type of SCADA pack that you have. We like in the previous lab we're going to use a SCADA pack 350 5 volt 20 milliamp version um, next we're going to give this flow computer a name. So this is the whole flow computer, not just the one gas run that we're building. So I'll just call this site ID. Maybe it's your site, uh, site's name or whatever it might be. Next is you're going to, it's going to ask you how many uh, flow runs you can have. You can have up to nine flow runs. You could have three gas, three locker and three water runs in this. Initially, we're just going to set up one run to start. So we're going to pick one and go next. It's going to ask you what do you want to call that one run so we'll call this gas run one it can ask you what type of flow run it is we're going to uh, simulate a gas run next it's going to ask you what type of, of flow calculation do you want to use do you want to use aga3 7 11 or vcone we're going to simulate an aga3 calculation so an orifice plate calculation uh, what's your compressibility calc uh, we're going to use aga8 but you could use nx19 uh, run direction, it's going to be four by value. You can set up two flow runs, a four by value and reverse by value if you're loading and unloading a tank. But for this application, we're just going to use four by value. Next, it's going to ask you what your input units are. We're going to use metric one for both input units and contract units, so they're both the same. Typically, I use metric one for gas and metric four for liquids. Next, it's uh, typically you connect to a 4102 multivariable over Modbus, but in this simulation application, we're just going to use the analog inputs of the SCADA pack. 
So we're going to use analog uh, 0, 1, and 2 for um, static, differential, and temperature. So the three uh, components will be coming back from your multivariable. We're just going to simulate with the th um, three analog inputs. So we'll pick analog input. We're using telepace. So we'll go telepace integer. Hit next. We know for our differential pressure is going to be the first analog input. We know that that's register 30,001. We know from the previous labs that it's scaled from 6554 to 32767. For this made up um, differential pressure transmitter, we're going to pretend it's scaled from 0 to 440 kPa. We're going to give it a low cutoff of 0 0.125 and we're just going to leave the hysteresis as is. That's how to set up the differential pressure analog input. Next, we'll it's going to ask you where the static pressure taps located. So whether they're upstream and downstream, we're doing a simulation here. So we're just going to simulate that the taps are upstream. Next is going to ask you, um, how is the static pressure measured? Is it an absolute pressure or gauge? So we're using, we're going to simulate gauge pressure. So we're going to use the um, atmospheric pressure where I, I am right now. So I just use my phone, looked up and uh, my elevation or my altitude, sorry, is 1045. So I type that in and it automatically calculates the atmospheric pressure for me. So I'll select OK. Hit next. Next it's going to ask you where is your static pressure analog input coming? So we know we use 30,001 for the differential pressure. So we use the next analog input, which is um, 30,002. We know that it's scaled from 6554 to 32767. For this static pressure, we're gonna pretend it's scaled from zero to 20,000 kPa. Select next. Next is gonna ask you if you wanna only use a dead weight tester to use for calibration. We're just gonna select no on this. Next is gonna ask you for my temperature input. We know that analog input one, or analog input zero, which is 30,001, is used, 30,002 is being used, so we're gonna use 30,003. We know that this one's 6554 to 32767 again. We're gonna pretend the scaling from this four to 20, um, four to 20 milliamp transmitter, temperature transmitter is negative 40 to 200. Next is gonna ask us, when is our contract hour? When does everything roll over? So we're gonna pretend 8 a.m.s our rollover time every day, so all of our of uh, values will roll over at that time. We're all we're going to leave the standard base conditions as is. Next, going to say, do you want to log the AGA eight gas component changes? So, any times you change the gas component, do you want to log it? We're going to select yes. The only time you select no he here is if you have an inline gas chromatograph. So, the gas chromatograph is changing the AGA or the gas component changes live, and it's just gonna log it all the time and fill up your event log. So you'd select no in that situation, but for an R situation, we're gonna be typing everything in manually, so we wanna hit yes. And we want to calculate the relative density and heating values as well. We're gonna enter each component here, so just select next again. You could go ahead and put in your gas composition. So if you put something in that doesn't total 100 and try to go next, it's gonna um, obviously tell you that you have an issue. If you put, if you get your gas component um, back from the lab and it's off by a fraction of a decimal, you could hit this uh, normalize and around it for you as well. So we'll just go next. Once you put your uh, gas composition in, you could go ahead put your orifice plate material. Typically, it's always stainless steel. Your pipe material, typically it's always carbon steel. Your orifice plate di diameter, typically they come in inches. You have to calculate that into millimeters. Orifice reference temperature tip is typically always 20. Um, your pipe diameter, same thing again. You take your pipe diameter, put it into millimeters. Your typical pipe reference temperature is always typically always 20. And then leave the rest as is and go next. We're not going to put a dead bend in here, so we'll just hit next again. It says, do you want to compare the current configuration with the configuration in the flow computer? So do you want to compare the configuration you just built with what's currently running in the SCADA pack? So uh, we're going to select no here. What's running in the SCADA pack is just the default load because we just wrote the C program in two seconds ago. So just select no. Next, it says, do you want to write the configuration? Uh, we're definitely going to select no, and I'll explain this later when we write the configuration to the SCADA pack. Hit next. Um, and then save save this real flow configuration somewhere on your computer. So I'm just going to save it under this default, but you could, you know, save it to a different file if you like. Next, hit finish. 
So now we have our configuration here. Now we want to write this to the SCADA pack. So we'll go up to the top. We'll go configuration, write configuration. When we do that, this is uh, extremely important. Typically always select selected configuration, flow run and sensor config. So what this is gonna do, it's only gonna write the run configuration and the sensor config. It's not gonna change or it's not going to write any of this stuff so serial ports or IP or register assignment any, anything like that we're going to handle in telpace everything else we're going to handle in real flow so in real flow we're just going to handle the flow run and sensor config so prep finish it says the flow computer ID doesn't match so that was that site ID name that we gave to our configuration it uh, doesn't match what's currently in the SCADA pack because what's in the SCADA pack is just the default, uh, whatever gets written when you initially write the C program in. So this might be an issue if you were going to a site and you thought you had the right config and you went to hit write and the um, site ID or the um, full computer ID doesn't match, then clearly your configuration is completely different than what's in there. Um, but for this application, we want to select yes. So it's writing everything at this point. So now we can go ahead and hit update readings now that everything's written to the SCADA pack. We can see our live values here. I'm going to go ahead and change those. So we'll go change the differential pressure. I'll turn it up. Turn my static down. To change my temperature. It's not normal. So now you can see my live values here. And everything else is being calculated. And it shows you live. You could also hit the update readings once. It'll take a snapshot of everything at the same time. You could go and put this into your flow calculation software, that, whether that's flow check or whatever it might be. As well as you can start and stop the calculations for its, the inputs, um, change the orifice plate, calibrate the inputs from here. We're going to go ahead and read the logs in history. When I do that, we're going to read everything. Go OK. Now that we read the logs, we could go up to the event log up here. We could see the logs filtered by date or time, as well as you can see all the alarms that got pulled from the SCADA pack. Um, we could go back here and go to the current run readings again and update the readings. So this is a basic configuration or a basic introduction to real flow and a basic configuration to a gas flow run.